we'll uh, convene the Dubuque County Board of Supervisors meeting Tuesday, November 12, 2019, 9 a.m. I would ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are on the agenda, uh, please go to the podium, state your name and address. Is there anyone to speak in, in uh, public comments? And again, please, uh, for Mary's purposes, name and address. today a drainage issue with a pond located at 17646 Pumpkey Road. And Haven Ridge was the owner uh, of this pond with the drainage issue. Play properties and including uh, the pond is fed by Middle Fork Catfish Creek and all the natural drainage play and from the proposed Haven Ridge. That dike. Um, so the, is the issue that we have with the drainage of the pond began last October um, when this property was parceled off and the current owner took possession of the pond. We've been actively trying to resolve the unnatural encroachment of water onto our property during this time. And we're gonna share just a couple pieces of evidence of the impact of this issue. The pond height is maintained by a uh, that appears to be altered by the current owner based on some photos we have. Uh, the current property owner has modified in a way that diverts water onto the pond. Currently we have approximately 3,000 square feet of water of property underwater due to trespassing. The depth of the water at its present covering farm fences. <clears throat> there are no prior to this this owner taking possession. Um, our concern today is um, mostly the safety of our children, as they often play in our yard and they pass through and with the depth extremely dangerous. Um, our, our other concern is also, of course, the damage to our property, being that it's 3,000 property. Um, but we also want you to know that we're opposed to a subdivision being put in um, in that property because we live in a subdivision. We enjoy that lifestyle, so that's um, not a bother to us. But we are very concerned about the increase in the pavement and the rooftops, which is also going to um, lead to an increase in water, large or small have a very big impact um, in the height of the pond that is currently on the property. And we are also concerned that the owner is currently um, unable to maintain the proper drainage and or maintain the water on his property. Um, and there are also like said, no easements for water on our property. Um, we've been wishing to resolve this issue for the past year. Um, in that time, we've reached out three times in person and received a hostile response. Um, we've delivered two letters, one regular one certified and also received no response. Um, we've reached out um, for advice and counsel um, and he has also spoken to Eric Meckel and Eric has um, given a phone call to the property owner and has also seen the property himself. Um, ultimately, we are the water to the property to be restored, um, but we are extremely fearful that 
because the owner is currently unable to maintain the pond that the new subdivision will compound this issue if the pond is not properly maintained, which it currently is not. So we just wanted to bring this to your attention today and also hope that you could share your views. Okay, thank you. And just for the, so that I can talk about it with my counterparts, which we can't do otherwise, is I did do a site visit to the Wagner's home. It's true, they have at least three foot of water onto their property from this pond. I did ask Eric Schmeckel to be involved. It's a private property issue, but my view of county government is we should still help facilitate solutions. And Eric is in touch with Mr. Stackus and we're trying to help find solutions to this matter, which would seem to be fixable. But if not, then resort to a legal issue. But with the safety concerns and everything, so I feel like it's appropriate for elected officials to be involved and in the loop on it. We certainly don't want anything bad to happen there. And hopefully we'll be able to find solutions. And if not, it is a, and I have been clear that it's a private, it's a private matter. But again, I don't think we just wash our hands of everything that's private. I think we try to counsel and try to mediate and see if we can help find solutions. So that's bringing you up to date on this. And I did suggest that the Wagners come in and utilize this because the subdivision is on the agenda for today. So this was the appropriate place for input. Should you be here for the discussion about the plat? Okay, then we can have discussion. Yeah, we'll have discussion. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to public comments. And again, if anyone on any other issue that's on the agenda would like to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. We do have under agenda item number one, proclamations. And I have a proclamation to read. And we do have, we have Yvonne Knoll, excuse me, LaVon Knoll, the executive director of hospice here. And this is a proclamation is National Hospice Month, November, 2019. I'll read the proclamation. Whereas Hospice of Dubuque is your local nonprofit hospice serving the tri-state areas terminally ill and their loved ones for over 36 years. And whereas hospice is about life, the comfort and quality of life. And whereas hospice care is individualized and provided by a team of healthcare professionals delivering comprehensive care centered on patient goals. And whereas hospice is a service that comes to you in the place you call home. And whereas hospice is for the entire family now and later. And whereas hospice of Dubuque is your hometown hospice since 1983. Now therefore the Dubuque County Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim the month of November 2019 as National Hospice Month and urges all citizens to recognize Hospice of Dubuque and the exceptional services they provide to our terminally ill. Uh, adopted November 12, 2019, Dubuque County Board of Supervisors. And uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the proclamation. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the proclamation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, Levine, would you like to make some comments? Thank you. <clears throat> well, first of all, this isn't part of my comments, but yesterday was Veterans Day as we're all aware. And I just wanna make the citizens of this county aware that Hospice of Dubuque has a program called We Honor Veterans. 
And through that program, we try to meet the unique needs of veterans at the end of life. We try and honor their service and sacrifices that they made. So I thought it was an opportune time to mention that and also to thank all our veterans. Stated, I'm LaVon Knoll, I'm the Executive Director for Hospice of Dubuque, and I want to thank the Dubuque County Board of Supervisors for taking the time this morning to proclaim November as National Hospice Month. You know, I want you to think about that last chapter of life, and yet it's something everyone will face eventually. One of the most frequent comments we hear is, why didn't we call Hospice of Dubuque sooner? So this proclamation provides an opportunity to raise awareness regarding the benefits of hospice care so people know where to turn for help when they are facing life-limiting illness. Our care team provides expert medical care <coughs> that helps patients manage the symptoms, their symptoms and enjoy loved ones. The care team also answers questions, offers guidance and support, and we help caregivers function in their role as the primary caregiver. We also provide spiritual support for both the patient and their family. The goals of hospice care are quality of life in the final chapter of life and comfort and dignity until death. This year, we're using National Hospice Month to remind the community Hospice of Dubuque is a community resource and we've been here since 1983. And we are here to help when individuals and families are facing issues care. County from Dubuque to Dyersville to Cascade and all the towns in between, Hospice of Dubuque is the hometown hospice, and we are always here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. All right. Do you want to get a Would picture? Like to get a photo? Yeah, up? sure. Joe, oh, should be all right. <laughs> Clean up the. The lens. Yvonne, you want to come on around? <clears throat> our, our flags are moved a little bit, but that's probably fine, right? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm like. You're at the high stage now. I, I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have much. to stand by the tall, skinny guy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your Thank service. You so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So I got the wheels turning to see if I can come up with a suitable location. For the oh, okay. You All right. Help. All right. Hey, it came back up. Okay. Next. Item on the agenda, item number two, approval of minutes of meeting of October 28th, November 5th, um, 2019. I'm good. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. Next up is uh, item three, consent items. Um, I don't know that we have any. So we'll go to item number four, procurement procedures. Um, we have a reference here to the uh, sheriff storage building. Previous specifications lacked a component. Motion, it would be in order to reject the previous bids. The recommendation of the sheriff Okay. Sheriff Kennedy, any comments? Okay. Based upon the recommendation of the sheriff, I'll make a motion to reject the bids previously received. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to reject the bids. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three zero. All right, uh, we're in uh, item number five, which is uh, public hearings. The uh, we have a proof of publication uh, for public hearing, which was for today, November twelfth. Uh, we need to, we would look, be looking for a motion to approve the proof of publication. So moved. 
And I will second that. Okay. All in favor of approving the proof of publication signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. All right, item B under uh, uh, public hearings under number five. Public hearing plans and specifications for the courthouse and old jail fire alarm system. Uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I will make that motion to open the public hearing. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We have uh, public hearing open regarding the plans and specifications for the courthouse and old jail fire alarm system. Um, is Chris here? Okay. Would prefer that he probably could uh, probably open public hearing. Here, we keep yeah. the public hearing open and move okay, on. Good. I think he should. I, I was thinking he would explain that so the public could. Uh, oh, I'd like to have him explain. Can we track him down? <laughs> Be honest. Thank you. Uh, the public hearing is open. Do we have to do anything? No. We just move on to the next agenda item. Okay. Okay. So, can we open another public hearing while that one's open? Okay. All right. We'll go to the next public hearing. Uh, which is item C, public hearing speed limit change on Herod Road. And uh, then we have also a related uh, resolution approving the speed limit change on Herod Lane. Make a motion to open the public hearing on the speed limit on Herod Road. And I will second that. Okay, motion made and seconded to open the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. Um, is there anyone here to speak on the public hearing on Herod Lane speed limit. Okay. Maybe our county engineer could give Anthony, a little Anthony, do you have any <clears throat> comment on the uh, Herod Lane yeah. issue? Herod Lane is currently a um, um, basically like a subdivision street or road that comes off of Derby Grange Road. Um, there is no speed limit posting out there, which by Iowa code means it's 55 miles per hour during, during the day and 50 at night. Um, it's you're hard pressed to do much more than 25 30 miles per hour out there it's it's a pretty tight road it's got some curvature to it um so this and and actually all the landowners out there property owners have um, uh, signed a petition to uh, propose this to be 25 miles per hour and i am in support of that okay and this is uh uh more of a uh, uh, subdivision type setting it's a dead end uh, residential and uh, uh, in most of our subdivisions are all of them 25 is the yep, that's speed correct. limit so okay is there anyone to speak on the Herod Lane issue I will make a motion to close the public hearing okay. Second. motion made and seconded to close the public hearing all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. I'll make okay. a motion to approve the resolution second Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the uh, resolution for the approving the speed limit change on Herod Lane. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right, we have a public hearing open for the courthouse and old jail fire alarm system. Uh, Chris Soder is here. We've asked if anyone um, present would like to speak uh, in the public hearing, but uh, Chris, we would appreciate you kind of giving us a summary on this. What we have is uh, current fire alarm systems in the jail and the courthouse are extremely old, outdated. There's no support left for them. Uh, the one manufactured doesn't even exist anymore. Um, and we need to be able to bring them up to current code. And that's what the plan is. Safety for everybody in the building, in the buildings and everything else. And Chris, we've been, this has been a topic of discussion for some time here. Uh, and uh, is this, uh, uh, this is something that uh, you feel need, needs to move forward and, and 
I would definitely um, bring us into compliance. Yeah, we have, like I said, we have zero support for the system that's currently in the old jail. And uh, the, man, the original manufacturer for the system here in the courthouse, um, there's no support they can give us other than some spare parts, which is heat detectors and smoke detectors. They can't do anything else for the current panel. There's no parts left for it. It's been, was installed in the early 70s and it's been unsupportable for probably the last five to seven years. Is Thank it you. in our fiscal year budget? Yes, we had set that up for this fiscal year to do it. And you're hoping to have it accomplished this year as well? Yes, my goal would be if we can get everything moving forward, it should be, we'll start after the new year. Um, and it's between roughly 90 days should be the time frame to get everything completed because we have to build it parallel to our current system, test it, bring it online, and then completely take out the old system. I know you also have a pre-bid conference that you're anticipating. Yes. So if folks have questions about this. Yes. All the all the key players hopefully will be here. Okay. And be able to go through the go through the buildings accordingly. Okay. Any other questions for Chris? Thank you. All right. Anyone else uh, to speak on the? Uh, on this matter, which is the uh, approving the plan and specification for the courthouse and old jail fire alarm system. Okay, hearing none. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution related to the courthouse and old jail fire alarm system. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the um, re the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. All right, uh, now we go to item 5D, public hearing. Amendment to zoning ordinance. Um, the first is, uh, first case is uh, Z, C number 10-27-19, Allen and Neil Wente, A1 Agriculture to A2 Agricultural Residential. And we'll turn it over to Zoning Administrator uh, Tammy Henry for some brief comments and then we'll open the public hearing. All right, good morning. The applicants are requesting rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential, one acre to allow Neil to remain in the home and retain the five acres for his cattle operation, and that the remaining 35 acres will be sold to Allen's son and continue in agricultural use. The property is located 1.07 miles northeast of the city of Dyersville along Winty Road and is legally described as the southwest of the southwest Section 13, T89 North, R2W, New Wine Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Allen and Neil Wente. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural <coughs> to the north, the south, the east, and the west. There are no special use permits attached to this property. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. Five rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners, and the city of Dyersville was notified. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, and Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7, may apply to this case. So what we have, I'll show you here. So what we have is, they're separating around here, and it is to allow them to, <coughs> to split this property, the two brothers, for the one brother to maintain living in the other one, and eventually the uh, son of the other will end up eventually owning the whole thing for farming. So he's gonna continue farming and he farms other property down the road as well. Okay, any questions for Tammy? Yes, a motion to I'll, open the public I'll hearing. I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to open the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. If there is anyone here to speak on the uh, on this matter, um, now would be the time to approach the podium. If you do so, please give your name and address for the record.
That's perfect, yeah. Is that good there? Yeah. Why I think it won't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave Schneider, Schneider Land Surveying, 906 First Street, North Farley. I've uh, been uh, working with uh, Al and Neil here, trying to uh, basically their look. Their son is looking to buy 35 acres, and uh, right back up, uh, 35 acres, approximately 35 acres off the farm. He's, he just got married this past weekend, and uh, and they're I guess letting him into the operation. Al and his brother Neil are keeping uh, this uh, cattle feeding. Uh, facility. Uh, there's an existing house on that Neil's daughter and, and husband live in. Uh, they own about four farms, I think, or farm about four farms, uh, some that they own, some that their mother still has in her name. And uh, I, I know there's one to the northeast and one to the west of here. Um, but anyway, they're, they're basically just trying to keep the, the buildings and allow the kid to finance as much as possible, which once you throw buildings in, it runs up the value. Uh, he's trying to they're trying to use some uh, the government to, through the uh, FSA office so. loans. Any questions for Dave? Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyone else to speak on this matter? And Tammy, what was the vote at the zoning meeting? Ooh, I'm sorry. Let me think. I think it was unanimous. I believe it was. I apologize for not having that in front of me. It was, everybody was present, so it was a six, six to seven to zero. Look at my notes. You don't usually ask me that. <laughs> I just have to find the minutes. Six zero. Yeah, six minutes zero. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I didn't want to say it for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Appreciate that. Let me double check that. Yes, yeah, six zero. Ready to close the public hearing? Yeah, I, I yeah. make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I will make a motion to approve the zoning request. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the zoning request. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. And when they find my cheat sheet, I'll make another motion. I will make a motion to suspend the requirement this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to suspend the uh, requirement that it be voted on uh, for passage at two prior meetings. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. I'll make a motion that this amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. Second. Motion was made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Three to zero. It is approved. Okay. Next uh, case. Uh, Public hearing, uh, this is 5E, uh, Amendment to Zoning Ordinance, uh, ZC number 102819, Roger and Mary Catherine Steffen and Caitlin Klein, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. The applicant to request and rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential, 1.16 acres, to be allowed to sell the home to the granddaughter and separate the home from the crop land so she can apply for financing to remodel the home. The property is located 0.86 miles southeast of the city of Luxembourg along Clear Creek Road and is legally described as Lot 1 of Stephens Farm, 2nd Subdivision, Section 23, T90 North, R2W, Liberty Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Roger and Mary Stephan. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the north, the south, the east, and the west. There are no special use permits attached to this property. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. Four rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners, and the City of Luxembourg was notified. Comprehensive Plan, Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7, may apply to this case. So as you can see in this area here is what they're trying to zone.
So they're gonna rezone this area with those buildings. And they're separating it from these buildings. Okay. Questions for Tammy? Entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. And I will second that. Oh, okay. Motion made and second to open the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Uh, the public hearing is open in this matter. Uh, case ZC number 10-28-19. Roger and Mary Catherine Stephan and Caitlin Klein. A1 Agriculture to A2 Agricultural Residential. If you would like to speak on this matter, uh, please approach the pro podium at this time. Give your name and address for the record. The chair recognizes <coughs> our former counterpart, Mr. Klein. Kind of different from this side of the... <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty happy, yeah. pretty relaxed. <laughs> I think I might be able to handle this. Uh, my daughter wasn't able to attend this morning because she's in Thailand. That was a pretty long commute, so I figured I'd help her out this morning. Um, yeah, this all boils down to uh, financing. Uh, they're buying the property from uh, my in-laws on uh, land contract, but they want to remodel, uh, do an addition to the house. In order to do that with a conventional loan, they have to uh, rezone and uh, or have to plat off the house. So that's uh, basically all this is about. Um, I think there's a restriction, no additional house on the property, which is exactly what they want. Most half of it's floodplain anyway, so uh, you know it's not going to change anything in the neighborhood other than they're going to be a lot nicer house there in the future mm -hmm. and some young kids uh, living in the neighborhood. So uh, pretty straightforward, A2 rezoning. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Daryl? No, I, I note that the, it was a unanimous decision again by applying the zoning. I, I just have one thing that's not related <clears throat> to this, but uh, I, when Daryl came up, I it just realized Normally, our meeting would have been yesterday on Veterans Day because of the holiday we're having it today. And I know Daryl's a veteran. Do we have any other veterans in the room? Sheriff Kennedy. Sheriff Kennedy. Sheriff Kennedy. <clears throat> thank you for your service. Uh, and I wish I would have done that to start the meeting, but uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else uh, on this to speak on this matter? If you want to speak, please give your name and address for the record and approach the podium. Seeing none. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Motion. Three to zero. I'll make a motion to approve the zoning amendment. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the rezoning. Rezoning. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three zero. Make a motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage of two prior meetings. I will second that. Motion was made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Make a motion that the amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. And I will second that. Okay. Motion was made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. It is approved. Okay, next item on the agenda, item six, approval <coughs> on plats. Uh, 6A, we have a resolution, final plat, Haven Ridge, first edition, section 27, center township. No, I think you should have Stephens Farm, uh, Haven Ridge first. <clears throat> you, do you want us to no, no, right here. go out of order? No, um, no, not a problem at all. Okay. My mistake. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so the property is owned by Josta LLC and is located 0 0.60 miles north of the city of Centralia at the corner of Humkey Road and Sundown Road. The property is owned R2 single family residential with a total of 8.175 acres surveyed. The purpose of this plan is to create a residential subdivision. The survey creates five lots. Lot one through five are all a minimum of one acre in size and will be sold for residential homes. Each lot shall have its own individual septic system. Water shall be supplied by one shared well. There was a rezoning of this property on zoning case number 1232 of 17 from R1 rural residential to R2 single family residential. Lot one through five have an approved residential entrance permit number 19-31 off of Humkey Road. The survey creates a private road with a 66 foot wide right of way easement and with a 20 foot road top and a 50 foot radius uh, cul-de-sac. There will be a 22 foot water and utility easement for lots two, three, and four and a 15 foot water and utility easement for lot five and lot one. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat. The mortgage holder's acknowledgement is signed and attached and all signatures are current. This plat has been reviewed by myself as plat's officer and has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend approval. So I'm going to, in light of I know, I, and I didn't know there was issues with this prior to today, but so this is the property that's looking at being rezoned. I believe was in question earlier, does not belong to this property, to these, these property owners. Um, they are placing two ponds this property for their runoff. They did work with Eric Schmeckel. Um, Anthony's reviewed it as well. And um, they've met all the requirements that we would require for a subdivision. We have a project, quite a large project drainage report that was done. And this is... Pond one and the pond two, there's storage requirements for those ponds on this property. Do it's we different. know Tammy, I'm, I'm sorry, Ann, you go ahead. I was first. just gonna say, I know that there are issues that are happening in this area and in Asbury specifically about whether or not people are meeting the requirements that are in their subdivision plats for water drainage. I'm concerned about comments that were made to us in the beginning of our session, just in public comments. Um, I'd like to see Eric here to assure me that, I don't know who owns the pond that sits there now, but if we have an issue that's growing, that's not going to get better. Um, so I would prefer that you were aware of that, Tammy, and your office was addressing that. I, you know, that's where I am. I'd like to see it be something that we're addressing before we approve a plat that may have implication or not. I don't, I don't know, Anthony, if you wished you'd known that as well issue with this um, um, overflow of this pond or redirection of the, of the water. Um, so if I do have some concerns about that as well. And again, I, I apologize for not knowing that ahead of time as well. Okay, I, that's okay. Yeah, and, and again, um, Tammy, this uh, the agenda came out and it was, uh, you know, I wasn't aware that it was, I had just talked to the Wagners, so I contacted them and said it's on the agenda. Um, so, um, uh, they're really, you know, it's not your fa oh, fault. Oh, no, no. And if, no if I may, I believe you did have concern when the rezoning was going on, if I'm correct, if my memory serves me. Yeah. They, they had concerns about water drainage at that time when the rezoning was done. I, I think as neighbors, I think they have the right to know whether, um, this development is going to further impact the pond, the existing pond, that's currently infringing on their property. I think that's a fair concern and, and question on their part. I can't give them that answer today. Um, uh, again, I we have Eric working on this, but uh, I, I would prefer that he would be here as well for this discussion. And again, Eric had reviewed everything and had signed off you know, and told us that everything was okay. So unless something's changed in between there, I, I you know, again, respectfully, I understand you wanted to come pr forward, but um, he did approve these plans. Sure, and, and it's not about fault. It's that maybe there's new information coming to supervisors 
That's the purpose of having public hearings. And that's the purpose of the public comment time. So, but if both the director of our department and our engineer are saying they wish they'd known, uh, maybe it's it's time to, to table and to look and see if it would change anything. Well, the, um, just a quick note, uh, the stormwater control from this proposed subdivision, it appears it, it meets the specifications. It, it's, it's controlling it appropriately, um, but it still has to release an, uh, an amount of water over time. So is it, that water will add to that, that pond. And if there is um, now a, a redirection of that water as to where it used to be, then that's, that's a discussion we need to look at. Mm -hmm. Heaven. Because the, the problems are existing today and no modifications have been changed to this parcel. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So you could anticipate that if they do make modification changes to the existing parcel where there's problems to you know, remove water from private land, for example, and the Wagners, that may impact the subdivision. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, know, I know it's a topic that's coming up more frequently because of the, <coughs> you know, the amount of water that we're seeing, the water events. So it's something we probably shouldn't say, well, the boxes are checked, let's move forward. Is there harm in a, um, a short delay while we try to see what and assess where this water is going? And the property owners are here as well. That'd be great. If they would like to jump in, I wouldn't mind it hearing. Sure. I have a couple questions for Anthony first, uh, if we can. Uh, Anthony, related to, <clears throat> do you know anything related to our culvert sizes and the flow of the water between Humkey Road and Sundown Road? Not to put you on the spot, but if you have any other comments you can relate. Um, have we had any, any problems that you were aware of? No, I'm not. Okay. So they're probably holding back the water adequately related to our infrastructure, but that's encroaching on private property. You know, the I think the majority of that property does shed to the pond uh, as, as, as it sits now. Um, they're going to have a couple of retention ponds that are going to help slow down that amount of water that releases from these, these, these uh, new lots. Um, but I am curious to hear about this uh, kind of relocation of water taking place on these property owners. If, if it's now I think on. this is the second year that they've had this type of flooding, about the same time at this year as last year. Um, and uh, um, in my discussions with Eric Schmeckel, um, and again, I haven't had any direct conversation with Mr. Stackus, but uh, that there's some problem with the uh, drain being plugged is the representation um, from uh, that Eric has gotten. Uh, so I don't know what role um, the county plays in this, if any. But, um, you know, it, again, it, 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 it's a fair question for the Wagners wanting to know is this development going to even further impact the flooding on their property? And I, to the Wagners, your contacting, was it just to LLC or were you trying to contact these landowners? Those landowners. Okay, so I just want to clarify it wasn't just to LLC that was um, not getting your letters or returning. And I'm wondering if there's not a way to do this other than in this very public forum because you're all going to be neighbors together, right? So if there's not a way because it's new information that you're presenting at least to um, the decision makers and the rec people who make the recommendation to the county, if there's not a way to maybe table this for two weeks to give some time for there to be conversation, I guess that's what I'd really like to have the owner talk about is a short delay other than in this pu very public way. My name is Luke Abbott. I live in uh, Piazza 1126 Hansel Circle. I'm currently one of the owners of the eight acres that you see there. 
Um, we've been in working tight with Eric Schoen. We knew there was concerns across the pond, so to speak. Um, we don't want to cause any issues. Of course, that is not our pond to take care of. What is to take care of is the water flow that leaves our property to the pond. So what we have done is we've done two large um, uh, retention basins, basically covering the entire scope in front of the pond, except for a small area. Instead of a small area right here, it's the only gap within the retention ponds. If we were doing everything that we can to assure our neighbors that there wouldn't be any, you know, we wouldn't be causing any more issue. Um, we simply started this wanting to build a home for our family. So we wanted one acre of land in Piasta. We had to go this route. Um, wasn't my preferred route to go, but this is what we did. Um, so we want to have good relationships with our neighbors. And in doing this, we have been working well um, with the county board to make sure that we are doing everything that is required by the county. Um, so I've talked to Eric, emailed Eric, um, talked to Anthony. I. I've done everything that we can possibly do and we've gotten all the approvals to do so. Um, as far as what Stackus does on his property, that's his property to maintain that has nothing to do with Choice to LLC. So it's two separate owners. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So we don't own that pond, we're just gonna control the water um, that we're supposed to control before it gets so we're, we are gonna slow it down. Right now with no corn or anything there, it's just gonna flow right into that pond and go away. <clears throat> We're putting two more ponds there to help stop that water or slow it down before it gets there. So, there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please go to the podium. Uh, like we had said earlier, um, the subdivision going in is 100% an okay thing for us, and that's something we have known about, and that's an okay thing. But we also understand that um, neighbor's property impacts neighbor's property. And so, although what he, you know, he's requesting to put in is not going to have a direct impact, it's going to have an impact to the next neighboring property, which then impacts ours. And, and honestly, if the pond gets any higher, it's going to be impacting three properties because right now it's on the edge of our property. And so with any additional um, runoff, which it sounds like there's maybe going to be minimal, but even, I'm, even just a little bit is going to increase that pond level as it currently is right now. Um, so that is still a very big concern and that that property impacts another property which impacts another property. So I, I understand that it's not a direct um, you know, property. adjacent property to us, but properties do impact one another. And when I was out there, the um, it's, any additional increase in uh, water volume would bring it pretty close to your septic system. <clears throat> yep, that's right at the, the base of our septic at the moment. So. And we've tried to, to resolve this issue with the, uh, the neighbor in a very friendly manner, and that's not um, been That's well. not this gentleman. No, right. no. Yeah. Yeah. no. But we've tried We're, to resolve as I neighborly people. Right. This, this was an opportunity for the Wagners to raise their issue um, because it is, it's, it's relevant. Um, and, and it was an opportunity to express concern about the current uh, uh, situation. And I'll just yeah. reiterate, I know you're going to slow the water down by those retention basins. That's the idea. But if you're not diverting it around the levee, then that water is ultimately going to end in that pond. <coughs> so okay. All right. And, and I don't want this to turn into a debate between neighbors. So. Do you have anything else from the Wagners? Thank you. Okay. Um, what is right. it, Mr. I'm sorry, I do have a question yeah. for you. I'm yeah. sorry. Abbott, what is your, okay. And are you hoping to break ground this You're fall? We're hoping to get this moved along so we can actually start selling the property. This is a, yeah. something we've been going on with since March. Um, can we be back here in two weeks? Does that do you some harm? It's not going to change anything on our end, I believe. I, I, 
it's again we've met all the requirements by the county so I guess I'm asking you to do a neighborly thing maybe and if I said no yeah no I'm, I'm that's why I'm asking right 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 we need a name We just we haven't yet addressed this as a county that uh, that this is coming up about that other subdivisions are not necessarily following through on what they had agreed to do and so you may be the first one to be impacted that I know about you know a projected plan and, and that's what I'm asking is are we ready as a county knowing what we now know in this room are you comfortable still ranking the recommendation or do we wish we had two weeks to get Eric Schmeckel here. I mean, we only meet every two weeks, so it's not like I'm trying to delay you. I just don't want to have this. Thank you. One of the questions I have, do we have a, I didn't see any of the detention ponds on the plat. Is that common? And or do we have any drawings uh, of the detention ponds? Yeah, so this plat situation, um, They were working um, with IMG out of Illinois, and uh, it, his father was working for that company and then ended up not working for that company anymore. So I have to say that Mr. Abbott's been trying to do everything he can um, through and My IMG. question is, is there, just for today, is there any drawings of the detention it's, ponds? It is. It's That's, in here. Okay. It there must be. It. It's just a very small front sheet. Okay. That's what I was trying to get at. Sorry. All right, and where are they? So I'm looking at them. I'm going to have to zoom in. 40 foot drainage, storm sewer easement. Is that it? I think I see it now. So basically, the only right the, the retention pond is going to run the entire length, yeah. the entire length all the way through. Small gap and line right in the front. It's probably about 100 and not even 100 feet between the two ponds. Otherwise, it covers the full vast that surrounds the embankment of that pond uh, mm -hmm. that's it, on the adjacent property. Is it is it designated on that drawing? I don't. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the. I'm trying to find the drawing where it would show it for you. And, and if we and if we if we don't have it, we, we can come we, we can come back to it too. I'll, if we don't have it available right now, we'll come back and revisit it. I just didn't see the detention basins drawn at all in any of the plat. There is a there is a plan sheet with it. Yeah. Yeah, there is there. a line sheet. It's shaded. It's we've I'm just that would trying be to helpful. find it here for you. I'm I'm okay moving the table if you if that's where the board is. It sounds like we've got some more work to do. Well I, I am too, but I mean I'm not sure it's completely appropriate. I, I will make a motion to table safety. for two weeks. I, I just speak yeah, if you have an expert opinion, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> My motion stands. No. There's a motion to table. I'll second that. Okay. Open for discussion. Go ahead. Dave. I would be interested in hearing the just, Schneider, Dave Schneider's Schneider. discussion. So, uh, Dave Schneider, Schneider Land Serving, 906 First Street North. I was involved in this property back when it was split into three, and I want to guess that was probably two or two to four years ago. I don't know if any of you guys were on the who was on the board at that point in time. Um, I don't remember it. But uh, we've had this, the same discussion at that point. The pond has been an issue. The, the pond is basically silted in because of the ag, obviously a little bit from this property, but probably more predominantly from some property to the west and southwest of here, as well as the subdivision to the south. Um, in fact, there's still some major erosion coming out of the subdivision to the south, which I believe has no uh, stormwater control on it. So this pond is actually acting as the stormwater control for the neighboring properties for the sake of everything downstream at this point. Obviously, it's backing up into their yards, but their yards do not have any <coughs> capability of ponding on them as they're set right now for so the most part. So you're referring to these? Yes, correct. The you're subdivision in my, the subdivision itself. And, you, and I didn't do the subdivision, but I did not see any obvious stormwater controls on that subdivision in that area. So <coughs> this pond is actually acting as the stormwater control for that substantially for that subdivision and all the developments that's happened there and I guess I the question I think that needs to be answered by 
the property owners, and uh, this goes back to floodplain, are these proper, are these houses being impacted by the flooding or is it just their yard? If it's just their yard, in my mind, it's a lot less of an issue than if they're actually taking water onto their, into their basements and that sort of thing. So, you know, if the ponding is doing what it's supposed to and backing up onto bare ground, um, obviously if there's some septic systems that, that maybe need exactly. to be modified or moved or whatever, um, it, in my mind, this pond is doing what it's supposed to. There's some major runoff uh, east of this pond that doesn't even get caught in this pond coming out of the uh, subdivision. Um, and I crawled through those ditches um, that, you know, there should be some ponding over in that area. And again, it's coming off, you know, there's some substantial water coming off that subdivision. So that's all I was gonna do is just provide some history. This was hashed over at the time. Um, when the rezoning was going when on. When the rezoning yeah. was going on. So that's just kind of the, you know, my background on it. Um, I think the subdivision should have taken the opportunity to try to purchase that pond back when this property was for sale uh, as a control for their own, own development. So anyway, that's my thoughts, but we'll let you guys take it from there. Thank you. And you can see I found there's the pond one and the pond two outlets. So there's, that's coming out of the, um, the project drainage report. Um, thank you. I okay. need, I need thank more you. time to just soak that in. Right. Mrs. Wagner, did yeah, you have I another I just wanted comment? to add that our subdivision has been established for 17 years. And in that amount of time, the pond has never come out of its bounds until one year ago um, when the rezoning and everything um, and it was parceled off. So um, the pond has never been an issue for the drainage. It has always held everything we've had. It is risen when we've had rains, but never within six feet of our property. And because it is starting to encroach on our septic, that is concern for us because the, our subdivision was approved when it was built and put in and the pond was there. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention too, that this is the first time in 17 years that the subdivision has been there, that the pond has been out of its bounds. Okay. So it's a new issue, it's a new a thing, and I believe that it does hold the runoff, it's just, it's not being properly maintained. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, there's a, the motion been made and seconded to table. Um, is there any further discussion on this matter? I think, well, uh, what I'd be looking to have is have Eric uh, Schmeckel uh, do a review and whether we need a work session or not, I would be interested in, in, in his report related to the, the runoff. Um, I'd like to have a, just a further understanding of the detention ponds and the design of those as well. And, I, and um, that's I think, just the part I didn't. So that, that's the reason I'm tabling just to gain some more information on those. Right. And, and I think the pond has functioned um, in, in the past. And again, I think there's a question of whether um, this is the, the level um, has intentionally been raised or if it's a plugged drainage system. And uh, I think um, uh, having input from Eric Schmeckel, I think is necessary for us to move forward. So did you have? I would like to hear what you have to say. All I was gonna say is you gotta remember in the last two years, we've had larger than normal rainfall also. And to address your question about the water coming off, it happened last year, nothing's changed on the property, Correct. even though that it's been rezoned or whatever you want to say, it hasn't changed. So nothing that we've done has affected the pond. So that's it. I'm, well, thank I you. appreciate your time. And I, I, in visiting with the Wagners, the, in the past, it would, uh, when they got a big rain, when, Let's face it, we had, what, three or four hundred year rain events in September. Um, and uh, uh, in the past, according to uh, Mr. Wagner, um, the pond would go up and then it would go back down. Um, and uh, that's probably the way it's supposed to work. But at some point, it stayed up. And there's actually a, there's a berm with trees and a, a fence, and the fence is barely visible. And I'm estimating it's at least three feet deep on their yard, in their yard, in their property, so. 
I just want to say, Mr. Abbott, you, you really are due an answer today. You are, and you said, well, what if I say no, right? Yeah, you're due an answer today. Your, your things are all signed off and you've done what you can. But I am likely to table this unless you've got some reason you need an answer today because th there's other things happening here that I think you get a flavor for now as well. Um, right, but, and I don't expect that this is gonna be delayed. We should be able to get right back at this so that he can start selling property to make good on his investment. Right. Okay. Any other discussion? Tammy. So the direction I'm hearing from you is you would like us to, to meet again with Eric Schmeckel, get some more information with Eric. Do you want us having a work session with you and Eric then? Is that what we're doing? I would be interested in, in knowing more about the uh, retention and detention ponds and actually seeing a drawing of those and, and having confirmation that they will actually hold back the water as, as planned and designed. And so that's, that's one of my holdups. I'm okay having that uh, information shared uh, in, in our supervisors meeting, but I'm not against a work session either. I, and I would just point out our next uh, meeting, which will be on the 25th, is an evening meeting uh, so that we could have a work session directly before the meeting, for example, uh, not so as not to inconvenience the folks involved. <laughs> Um, unduly any more than they, they already have been um, and uh, make you know make sure that uh, Eric Schmeckel and anybody else that we need uh, is here for that so okay okay and any further comments all right all in favor of the motion to table signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. carried three to zero all right um, Next up, 6B, resolution, final plat, John Steffens Farm, third subdivision, section 23, Liberty Township. All right. The property is owned by Jerome and Julie Reneker, and it is located 0.75 miles southeast of the city of Luxembourg along Clear Creek Road and with a total of 179.73 acres surveyed. The property is owned A1 Agricultural. The purpose of this plat is to separate the new hog building for the Suns LLC. <coughs> the survey creates four lots. Lot one is a total of 3.03 acres surveyed and is the site for the hog operation. Lot two is a total of 54.73 acres and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot three is a total of 87.02 <coughs> acres surveyed and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot four is a total of 34.95 acres surveyed and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot one will use an approved entrance number 2019-24 off of Clear Creek Road and lot two will have access across lot one off of Clear Creek Road. Lot three and lot four will use existing uh, field entrances off of Clear Creek Road. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat. The, mortgages, the mortgage holder's acknowledgement is signed and attached and all signatures are current. This plat has been reviewed by myself as plats officer and has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend approval. So this is a division of, of an existing farming operation, a hog operation. And so I'll show you, here is your lot one that's being created, which is going to be around the hog. Which are lot two, three, and four, and they'll all remain in ag. They've been divided up, so if let's say they can when they continue buying into the farm, the family, that when they go to the bank, it's easier for them to buy a piece at a time sure. versus coming in and trying to purchase the whole farm. And is that the piece we just <clears throat> approved A1 to A2 as well this morning? No, that's not this one. This one did not have to be rezoned because that small piece, this section here, uh, one meets the egg guidelines. The three acre parcel? Yeah, even that because they meet the farm exemption rule because it's the hog operation. So they file a scheduled F, they do everything that meets our guidelines. And so you can flat that off smaller? You can flat that off smaller because it meets that guideline. Make a motion to approve. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. Carried three to zero. Next up, 6C, resolution, final plat, John Stephens Farm, fourth subdivision, section 23, Liberty Township. This is the one that you'd heard earlier. The property is owned by Roger and Mary Stephan and it's located 0.86 miles southeast of the city of Luxembourg along Clear Creek Road with a total of 9.27 acres surveyed. The property is owned A1 Agriculture with the pending zoning case of 1028-19, which we've just approved. Um, 1.16 acres to A2 Agricultural Residential. The purpose of this plat is to separate the home and the 1.16 acres to sell to the granddaughter so she can get the financing for the, to remodel the home. The remaining 8.11 acres will be sold to the granddaughter for farming and will be under a land contract with Roger and Mary. Lot 1 and Lot 2 will both use existing residential accesses off of Clear Creek Road. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat. There are no liens or mortgages on this property and all signatures are current. This plat has been reviewed by myself as plats officer and has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend approval. So this is just the plat following the rezoning. A motion to approve. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Okay. Sounds good. Um, would you like what, recess? Let's take a brief recess. I'll sign these. and take a motion to recess for five minutes. All right. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Agenda is uh, action items. Uh, which is agenda item number seven. The board may uh, approve, deny, or table any action item. The first item uh, is uh, 7A, resolution uh, regarding appointment of deputies, assistants, and clerks. I guess we would go to our human resources director, Don Sherman. I have reviewed both of these positions and recommend approval. And they're both Sunnycrest Manor. I'll make a motion Positions. to approve the resolution. Second. Okay. Uh, motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. The next item is uh, resolution approving the release of mortgage in Des Moines County for Jumpstart Federal Housing Rehabilitation Payment Program. Motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 7C is a resolution to approve necessary documents with FEH design for professional services for specifications for front end services for the Farley Shop revised air exchange system and related mechanicals proposal. We want to table this or table it? Destroy yeah. it. Motion to table. There's a motion to table. E either way. Is there a second? Uh, if it tables, we're going to keep. We're going to just keep coming just, coming back to it. It's going to yeah, be on I our agenda. Take it off. Let's take it off. That's I draw my motion. Okay. That's my thought. Is that you know we just at this point it doesn't sound like that's a hard direction we're going, and we may come back to it in a few months. So how do we withdraw something from the agenda? Oh, it is a resolution. I'll make a motion to deny the resolution. Okay. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to deny the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. 7D is a resolution approving the Tom Hancock Memorial Grant Awards. It is Good in have, your Tom's here. Have Tom packet. Uh, Peas? Talk a little bit. Hello, good morning, supervisors. I just want to reiterate uh, there's uh, we did receive nine applications and we, and we were able to fund eight. And I think it was a good um, representation. There's a lot of equipment on there that's life saving equipment. I think you're going to make uh, eight eight services and. Uh, real happy and I think uh, this is going to go a long way to make the citizens of Dubuque County safer. It's going to make a better prepared uh, 
emergency response agencies in this grant program is uh, very well received, well needed. Uh, fire and EMS people, you know, are having fundraisers all the time to, to do equipment like this. And um, we're really proud that we're able to um, with the Nuviana Luxembourg Fire Station project to give them a good portion of the, the money. So I think Chief Lucan is happy with that as well. So I, again, thank you very much. And I think people are excited for next year. I did have some conversa conversations with Stella about how to work it through. Uh, if you guys approve through my office as far as, you know, being able to um, document everything and, and make sure the committee gets the, the feedback and we'll get everything that it's um, done appropriately. And I did also, when I was meeting with, um, with Tom about a bunch of other things, we should look at perhaps moving this into his department and moving it away from a grant program into a line item so that he does have authority to kind of look at this as a, a standing, I think that was our intent, that it would be a standing grant and then it might move into emergency management. And um, we should at least look at that. And you can visit with Stella about that as well, but um, it's certainly not something that we want to, I think we intend to fund it on an ongoing basis while our fire and EMS have need. So just a comment. I know we're not doing anything about it today. I, I guess I, I'm not, um, uh, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I, I do think um, the committee uh, really uh, did prioritize. I was, um, it you would know. remain a committee. It, it's just that Pardon? it would remain a committee. Yeah. And that report would be to right. us and we okay. would approve the awards, but just moving it as we come upon these, it should find a home and be connected to a department if it can be. This, I think, is one of those examples where it it's going to be facilitated by our emergency management department. Well, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you for, yeah. for organizing this, taking a, an idea and, and moving it forward. Uh, you've got to, you know, 21 or in that neighborhood as far as uh, EMS and fire throughout Dubuque County and to, to help coordinate them, uh, get the applications in, uh, vet them, and then come up with the awards uh, in, in such a short time. I appreciate you and, and Supervisor Baker and everyone else's involvement in this. So I'm sure Tom uh, Hancock will be very proud. I think I think he would, and Clean is very happy, and you know it takes a lot of a lot of pancakes to even come up with five thousand dollars. So yeah, know. exactly. And, and paddle wheels, right? Yeah, a lot of spins <laughs> of the paddle. paddle wheels. More fun though, Jay. <laughs> and, it, and it moves it away from fundraising yeah. for yourself. Yeah. I know when we attend so, the pancake. It's very breakfast. helpful. And uh, and obviously these are things that, in spite of all the fundraising that the departments do, um, some key uh, safety. Uh, uh, equipment and and uh, were um, they weren't able to fund and and yeah, like, uh, the, like the Worthington project for example is a, a key piece of equipment if somebody may have a heart attack anywhere and they were able to get a, a Monsanto grant I believe for twenty five hundred you know because their total project was about eighteen thousand and they were able to get a DRA grant for five thousand so this just finished the project for them otherwise they'd have had a very tough time coming up with the money to complete the project in the time frame in order to even draw down the DRA money. So it's just that collaboration is just excellent and exciting. So. And I was really impressed with the committee members being able to set aside, uh, uh, you know, which department they were from and recognize the, the needs that were uh, laid out in the uh, grant applications. and. I don't think we'll have any problem um, worrying about whether or not there's going to be enough grant applications uh, uh, for, for this funding. And uh, I think also they've probably set the bar for what the maximum uh, grant will be. I think that was part of the discussion as well. Yeah, so. But leaving it open to yeah. the rest of you know, of course. If somebody had a catastrophic yeah. failure of a, a fire engine or something and needed, you know, the so we're still open. Right. To right. And this uh, is probably a good time to, to recognize while this is equipment and training, uh, the real asset is the volunteers, yeah. right. the people that uh, basically 
devote their time to the community to provide EMS and fire to, to make the community safer, all on a volunteer basis. And uh, without that asset, uh, I don't know where we'd be. Uh, it would cost millions, and uh, we would be a less safe community. It gives them the tools to do their job. So, complete some very worthy projects. Thank you. Thanks. I will make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. Next up is 7E, resolution approving the office lease with the Dubuque Idea Campus LLC for the CEO of the East, but should be Central, I think, right? East Central Mental Health Region. And so the concept of this is to pair them with the existing, um, is it social workers, Ann, that are coming from Cedar Rapids? Don't we already rent one office at the space? We do, but the concept wasn't to pair. The concept was to find so there's no coordination between those two groups? I guess I assumed there was, but maybe they do different roles. Well, they do different things, and it wasn't because of that. Otherwise, they, I mean, I think we just found a pretty inexpensive place to be where it seemed like there was good creative energy, the response that um, the CEO has had with me is that it's she's excited to be in a space where there are people looking they're just working on problems okay. differently. That's a good energy. So it's just coincidence then. Okay. All right. I think it's interesting to note that it only goes until the end of our fiscal year. So it's a month to month. It's a, a short term lease, basically. That's noteworthy. Were there any other options discussed? I, I don't, I wasn't in this. This oh, is. Who proposed this, is, this resolution? Okay. I was, thought it came from the mental no, health region. No, it's not mine. I, I'm assuming it's coming from Dawn. We heard her voice. We're in discussion, Don, on the uh, 7E, the office lease uh, resolution for the, at the Dubuque IDEA Campus LLC for the CEO of the East Central Mental Health Region. Um, so this, we had been looking for some space. Um, she's a very remote worker. Um, this is the space that we put the region's two social um, workers in, so she shares a similar space. I think she's um, an office down from there. Um, and so the, the region will reimburse us 100% of the cost, um, any of the cost incurred. So this lease is $600 a month. We've only done the lease till the end of the fiscal year because we haven't budgeted beyond that. So we can relook at it, um, reevaluate it at that time, but we will be, the county will be reimbursed 100% of the expenses. And she will be here next Monday for a short work section, session introduction as well. Great. And, and so my, my two questions, uh, one was because we already had a lease with some of the social workers, this was a, a addition or pairing. And then secondly, do we look at any other alternatives? So maybe the first question first. Yes, we looked at several alternatives. She was, she was in the building for a little while. Um, it was a shared workspace with two um, confidential employees. And so we weren't really able to give her a confidential area. Um, we've actually walked over to the old jail area, um, looked over there. And then we had three different office spaces from a realtor that they had forwarded us um, some links to there. Um, and this one we actually did a, a walkthrough and she was very happy with the facilities. Good. Yep, yeah, I've, I've been there. I know it's, it's a new facility and uh, well done. Okay. Anything else on uh, under discussion? We have a Look, 70 maybe resolution. Maybe the first part, Don, the first part of my question was you mentioned the, the two other social workers. So they're adjacent to this office or in the same same floor? Yes, they're on the same floor. I believe they're just one office over. Okay. Yep. And are you familiar with their duties? Would there be any synergy or discussion between them, or are they totally separate? No, she's met with them, um, uh, with the social workers in that building as well. So, no, I would, in, in the whole environment is to kind of have a, that openness. Um, they're there, I think, three to four days a week. The social workers are present in that building as well. So I would anticipate that they would be meeting, um, you know, trading ideas that it would be a good, you know, region um, workplace for them, for the region. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
What's your pleasure? I will make resolution? a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution in 7E. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. 7F, resolution to approve the Iowa Department of Transportation Materials Inspection Cost Voucher FM transfer for HMA resurfacing with cold in place recycling project on Old Davenport Road and Feeney Road. Project STP-S-C0318-7 E-31. Anthony, well, as you, you want to interpret that? Sure, yeah. The, uh, as you can see, the DOT is a little behind on their billing. Um, this is for Old Damport Road, which was a couple years ago. Um, it, that was a federal aid project, and um, they are required to come in and do a certain amount of testing on the materials on uh, those federal aid projects. So this uh, encompasses that testing uh, of the asphalt. It's generally just the asphalt was, is what they tested. And uh, they sub subsequently uh, bill us for that testing. So we have to pay for that. It comes out of our foreign market account. So it's not a local, a local expenditure. It comes straight out of our FM account. That's really what it is. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. A motion made and seconded to approve the resolution in 7F. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. 7G. Resolution to approve the Iowa Department of Transportation Materials Inspection Cost Voucher FM transfer for the HMA resurfacing on Clay Hill Road, Project STP-SCO3184-5E31. Anthony, same thing? Do the same thing. For Clay Hill Road, it was a uh, federal aid project as well. It's just uh, testing and monitoring of the uh, asphalt materials on this project. Wish to approve. And I will second. There's a motion made and seconded to approve the resolution in 7G. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. 3 to 0. 7H. Resolution to approve snow and ice removal. 28E agreement with the city of Balltown for the 2019 2020 winter. The amount of that is $880. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Three to zero. Seven I resolution approving the memorandum of understanding with the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management Department for funds for a hydrology study. This is the uh, um, endeavor we've been working on with uh, Homeland Security. Houston Engineering, Eric Schmeckel, Homeland Security, um, and this is a $30,000 uh, um, grant, basically, or contribution. Don, was this sent to um, the county attorney? No, this came directly from Homeland Security. Um, what We need to have this signed off, and then on your next agenda, you'll have the contract from Houston Engineering for the actual project services. And will you be sending that to the county attorney? The Houston Engineering? Right. Yes, I can do that. So wouldn't we want this to also be looked at by the county attorney? This is, isn't this receiving to receive the funds? This is to receive the funds, yes. Did you have questions on it? And it was in the packet. question is when do we send things to the county attorney and I think that's a it's a good question probably one that we should work on related to process I didn't say I'm holding it up I'm just asking if it gets sent if it doesn't get sent who decides that you know these are the questions that I have all the time I know that's maybe in our strategic planning discussions and that was my response we should work on that as a process so that would be agreeing to what you're saying right um, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. Uh, 
approving the memorandum of understanding with the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management Department. Yes, I, I have some discussion about that, okay. and which is when this comes in. I mean, I don't see, I don't see the agenda packet until sometime Thursday, um, and then no one's in on Friday, perhaps. So, could we have a, a Dawn? Could you have a system for sending things to the county attorney? That are, I mean, you must know this must come to you some other time before Thursday. Okay. So how, how, I mean, I would like to maybe see things on Tuesday too, but again, I mean, I don't know. But so what, what is your thought process on how something goes to the county attorney or does it? Well, I think this needs to have the county attorney present um, because I, I don't disagree with you that I think his eyes and approval of it, um, that would you know, it, it's his commitment to following our timeline because I would then, he would, I got that at 3.30 on Tuesday. Would he be able to review it, ask questions, um, and get back to us by noon on Wednesday? So I would, I think he needs to be present for that so that we can work together on timelines. Um, otherwise, it, this would just been on the next agenda because it wouldn't have been able to meet the deadline. So I want to be respective of his time as well. I mean, I think that, key thing is this is uh, $30,000 that's coming into Dubuque County from the federal government. And right. uh, that is a very good thing for a specific initiative related to water quality and quantity, which we have plenty of. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. All right. Uh, next. Item uh, is uh, item eight, communications. This is correspondence that the board will receive and file without taking action. Um, we have uh, item 8A, a letter received from uh, county auditor regarding reappointment of representative to the county compensation board. Uh, county attorney or county auditor's representative uh, uh, reappointing uh, Mr. Joe Link. Uh, so, my motion to receive and file would be in order unless we want to do them in mass. So it's a re just received and file. This minute, yeah, I'll make a motion to receive and file the document. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, I'm just going to ask uh, Dawn if we could uh, at the next meeting put something on to revisit our uh, representatives. We have uh, uh, Dan White and Doreen Wiederhold. And I know Doreen has had a, a change in employment and shift and may or may not be available. I'll check with her and maybe the other supervisors could, you know, think if there's a someone that they'd like to have. Do we each have a person? No, we have two. We the, the Board of Supervisors has two. That's correct. And then how are those people chosen? Um, we you ask for volunteers. Okay. So So is there time to ask for a volunteer? Right. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm that's why I brought it up. We can't do anything with it here, but I thought it would be okay as long as we're in session to point out that uh, we may need uh, someone else. I'll, I'll double check with her, but uh, um, okay. So if we would each bring the name of a volunteer and choose two, or what, what do we do? I would say, I think we, and the last time, uh, I think there was a change maybe two or three years ago, and uh, we appointed two different people. Yeah, Dan White and Doreen Wiederhold. And I think that was at the probably the initiative of Supervisor Baker and myself as new people coming on. Um, but I, I think it's just a, an open process where they'll, they normally meet around budget time in February. In December. Well, actually in December, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so in December. So yeah, very timely now then. Okay. And so do you think there's gonna be an opening for some? I believe there is, I'll double check, but I can't, I, I, with her, yeah. Without and I going think into her. If there is going to be an opening, could you let Dawn know and maybe you well, could let me yeah. know? Well, and if she's not able to serve, should we get a letter or an email or something? Okay. Well, I'm just, 
different conversation. The board can direct new people at any time. Right. Sure. So there's on all the you know, there's right. not we don't have to wait for an opening. So if there's a person you feel that's qualified and you'd like to serve, then I'd feel free to serve that name up. Right. Okay. All right. We have uh, next item is eight. B, a letter from the Dubuque County Board of Health regarding syringe services programs. I would like to make a comment about this. Um, I attend the meetings of the subcommittee. And I know Supervisor Chair Baker, you attend that um, frequently as well. There's been significant work put forward by the subcommittee in addressing the syringe service report from Mercy One and then also in crafting this letter to kind of give us some closure to it to say it doesn't we don't want to just have shelved it you know here's kind of the recommendations that they have um, to follow up on that I, I I think it's it's we should be thankful that they did this that they tried to put their own committee and then of course it comes back through the Board of Health the Board of Health I think has done an exceptional job of being on task and looking at things that come up so it's appreciated certainly by me and I would assume by you as well that they did um, put this together for us as some recommendations I mean I don't know that they're necessarily firm recommendations certainly it's just kind of general language but trying to follow up on that report okay. any other discussion otherwise we need a no. motion to receive and file I will make a motion to receive and file the document second okay motion Made and seconded to receive and file. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Um, 8 C, incident report, recommendation to file and refer to the budget director, Stella Rundy. It looks like it was a minor accident. So I hope that's what it was. Is there anything we need to know with this? Is this something that's getting turned over to insurance? Mm -hmm. Anthony, were you familiar with this? And any comment? No. Um, yeah, he he came in and filled out the incident report. Um, you know, there was the fact of the incident there. Um, yeah, so we'll just turn it over to insurance and let them deal with it. Thank you. I'll make a motion to receive and file and turn this over to insurance. Second. Okay. All in favor of receiving and filing signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Okay. 8D, uh, Manure Management Plan Annual Update, Dale Ralvis, number 59393. A motion to receive and file and I will second that motion made and seconded to receive and file all in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. carried three zero okay eight e under communications proof of publication this is the hatch maps for the for Dushner and Rineker that's where we receive and file these I'll make a motion to receive and file the proof of publication. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Okay. Item 9 is uh, under appointments. We've got uh, from the uh, Board of Health, we have uh, an application. Uh, let me enlarge a little bit here. We, we have, have Matthew uh, Sanford. From uh, has a, applied for the County Board of Health, and this is uh, yeah. And we are we do have an opening on this committee. We've received, I think, a letter or a communication from the president of our Board of Health asking us to appoint no one further. That they are looking at um, the size of the Board of Health. I don't know where that is, Don. Does that strike memory with you? Yes, it does. Um, he's asked that we, they're, they have not made a recommendation. They're going to, in their December meeting, the Board of Health is going to 
um, make a recommendation um, to bring to the Board of Supervisors to change their bylaws. That has not been done right now. Um, there is a vacancy. The vacancy um, to receive gender balance needs to be a male, so that's why you see this in front of you at this point. You can table it if you would like to wait until the Board of Health's recommendations um, on their bylaws, but it is a male needed for gender balance, and we received an application from a male at this time. Kind of getting mixed message here because it was not that long ago that they asked us to expand the board, which we did. And uh, I'm, we have somebody that wants to serve. My inclination is to allow them, is, is to appoint the individual based on, uh, you know, based on their previous action, which Mr. Beshin was also involved in. Uh, uh, and so I, I think they're having trouble getting a quorum. And that was, that's my understanding. They're having difficulty getting a quorum, and so they felt if the board was smaller, they know who, um, they felt they could make a quorum more easily. I, you know, yeah. and I then, imagine being Mr. Sanford and then realizing that you've applied and then they wish to have a smaller board. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 it's I think, a mixed message to me. I, I think if we have people that are willing to serve, um, I, I, I think the more the merrier. Um, I, I, I know that Mr. Beshin's seat is up. Um, as well, I, I think I received uh, communication to that effect, but I think that's up at the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not sure if he's talking about his spot or the more recent opening. But uh, uh, I don't table. think we can jump back and forth. Motion to table and ask Don, please, to look into that letter from Mr. Beshin. I don't know where that is. Well, they'll be bringing their formal bylaws it will it actually will have to be in January, right? Your next board meeting. There, um, it is an item for discussion on the next board of health meeting on December twelfth or eleventh. But did we get an email from him asking us to hold off? Yes. Okay. To each of us individually. I, I don't know. I don't know how that communication I, came to me. He sent I would be, an email. Yeah. I would be looking to, at least from what I see. I do not know, Mr. Sanford, but his qualifications seem very good and he's willing to volunteer for the Board of Health. So I would be looking to, to move forward, but I understand there is a motion on the table. Okay. There's a, a motion to table. Motion dies for lack of a second. I'll make a motion to move forward with the appointment of Mr. Sanford. And I will second that. Is there any discussion? I will be voting no because I think that the chair of our Board of Health has asked us to wait on this and they are in the process of looking at their bylaws. Um, I don't can, want can. to have other folks from that Board of Health leave us. They are doing great work. They are. And I do know Mr. Sanford. He's on the ad hoc committee, or excuse me, he's on the subcommittee um, that deals with um, the syringe service program. That I, He's at a monthly meeting. Do you feel he'd be a good addition to the Board of Health? If the Board of Health wanted more folks, I think we also have, and we have another application from a woman that we were waiting on, holding on that one to see. I mean, she's and works at Crescent Health with the Marshall East population. I mean, we have there's interest from folks in the community, but we right. kind of have to have some conversation with our our Board of Health. And we had, and so that's probably what Supervisor Baker's alluding to is we we went through this maybe a year ago, so we had those conversations, and the Board of Health was uh, you know, very aggressively right. saying that they wanted to expand their board. And so I'm honoring the request by adding Matthew Sanford. Did you not get the Mr. Beshin's email? Do you, did you not get that message? I did receive that communication. So yes. that's all. I'm just yeah. trying to, you know, we got that message. Yeah. Yep. And so that's why I'll be voting no okay. on this recommendation. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Carried two to one. All right, um, the rest of the under 9B is open vacancies on boards and commissions, informational only. Okay, and then we'll go to personnel requisitions. Uh, item 10 on the agenda, we have uh, 10A, permanent full-time victim witness coordinator, county attorney's office. 
Dawn, do we have anything on? This is just a resignation, so it's not adding any FTEs um, to the composition. Um, it's just a replacing a uh, now currently vacant position. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the personnel requisition. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Uh, next up is uh, 10B, permanent full-time clerk for sheriff's office. Sheriff Kennedy, anything you want to add? Perhaps Dawn as well? Um, this was the position that we, we had the work session about uh, two weeks ago. Um, we, uh, we took your recommendation. I, I spoke with Dawn about it. Um, her position on it, originally I know we had talked about either starting the person's pay in the 1st of July or the 1st of January. Um, when I spoke with Dawn, um, she felt that if this person was doing the job and they were not getting paid, that they should be getting started, to get, or we should start paying them immediately. Um, so it was her, uh, with her direction that we uh, went ahead and uh, put the personnel requisition in and um, we'll be, uh, at, uh, if it's approved, we'll be bumping her pay up at the beginning of the next pay cycle. And so this is an upgrade from a clerk three to a clerk four? Correct. For a, a clerk three that was performing at a clerk four level? And okay. we, we had discussions even during negotiations. So this, there has been lots of, op, um, the, the sheriff was trying to um, relieve this um, person of some of the duties, the higher responsible duties. <clears throat> Just given his operations, he was not able to do that. And so it's my recommendation since the employee is currently doing and has been doing that, that we place this person at the, the correct classification immediately. Okay. Motion to approve. And I will second that. Okay. Motion uh, made and seconded to approve. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Carried 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, 10C, permanent full-time deputy, jail for the sheriff's office. And Don, you have anything on this? This is just replacing a vacant employee. So again, it's no increase in employee count. I will make a motion to approve the personnel Second. requisition. Motion Second. made and seconded. Um, just in discussion, was this a retirement replacement or? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor of the motion to approve signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Three to zero. All right, uh, next up uh, is uh, uh, 10D, permanent full-time maintenance worker two for the road department. And Don, do you have anything, or Anthony? Yeah, this, we're still on the merry-go-round of internal postings. So um, Brent Grover bid into Jim Larkin's position. Now it's Brent Grover's M2 position is being advertised internally. Okay, so we had a retirement? Yes, uh, uh, Jim Larkin's gonna retire in December. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the personnel requisition. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, carry three zero. All right, move to agenda item number 11, which is tabled and pending items. We have uh, 11A is uh, strategic planning. We did have our first meeting and uh, are we, do we have another meeting scheduled? Yeah, I think we did. December 11th at 2 p.m. out at ECIA. Okay. Yeah. All right. And next item then, if there's nothing else on the strategic planning, 11B, jail assessment project. Uh, is there any update? I think that's... I thought they got back the architectural report. I thought that they got back some information from the architect. I was expecting to see something. So I, th I think there is something coming. Okay. So we'll keep that on there under tabled and pending. All right. Um, item 12. Public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are of concern to that person 
and which are not agenda items, please go to the podium, state your name and home address. Please be aware the board is limited in their ability to respond to such inquiries and Iowa Code prohibits the board from deliberating or acting on items not appearing on the agenda. Is there anyone here to speak in public session, public comments, excuse me? Seeing none. I would uh, entertain a motion to recess. I'll make a motion to recess. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're recessed till 11 a.m.